refraction of light. After learning reflection of light, now refraction. Basics of refraction. Laws of refraction. Then refractive index. Refractive index is denoted by N or mu. Students, give more attention to the basics of refraction, equations of refraction. Okay. Equations of refractive index in terms of wavelength, in terms of velocity, in terms of absolute refractive indices, etc. The only difficulty or the big difficulty in learning ray optics is managing number of parameters. If you know how to use number of parameters or how to manage these parameters, then it is a very beautiful chapter. You have to learn or you will find equations like refractive index equal to C by V. Refractive index in terms of speeds. Refractive index equal to lambda air by lambda medium. Refractive index in terms of wavelengths. If multiple media are involved like water, glass, glass, oil, oil, diamond, then relative refractive index is preferred denoted by N to 1 refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium which is given by N2 by N1. Don't get scared with notations. It is very easy. Only thing understand and proceed. Okay. Whatever is taught systematically just understand. After refraction of light let us go through normal shift, lateral shift, total internal reflection. TIR, total internal reflection. Early sunrise, delayed sunset. Refraction of light. Refraction of light is nothing but bending of light when it travels from one medium to another medium. One homogeneous medium to another homogeneous medium. Homogeneous. Homogeneous medium means density of the medium should be same throughout. If this is water, if you consider small volume of water, then density is say 1000 kg per meter cube. If you consider large volume, there also density is same. You consider any part of the medium, if density is same, then we can claim that this is a homogeneous medium. Yes, water is a homogeneous medium. Glass is a homogeneous medium. Now, let us go through what is the opposite of homogeneous? Hetero. Heterogeneous. Heterogeneous medium. Here, Density should be different from region to region. Heterogeneous means if this is container, water, oil, oil floats on water and this system is a system of heterogeneous. Refraction of light is the bending of light and change in the speed when it travels from it means light travels from one medium to another medium. Let this be an interface of air and water. Air, water. This is the incident ray. Don't forget to draw the arrow mark. After incident ray, I should draw normal drawn at the point of incidence. Students, it's a small correction, small adjustment. When you draw dotted line, make sure that this is smooth line. After that, draw the dotted line. Like this. Okay. It looks neat. 
air is a homogeneous medium water is another homogeneous medium when light travels from one medium to another medium it bends so this is the bent ray called refracted ray let me produce this this dotted line is called the direction of incidence the incident light supposed to travel in this direction but due to change in media medium the light ray bends here angle between incident ray and the normal is called angle of incidence usually denoted by i angle between refracted and dotted normal is called angle of refraction or this angle is called glancing angle let us denote this by theta this is the deviation let us denote it by d this is incident ray this is refracted ray this is normal drawn at the point of incidence and this is the interface this is the interface of two media below water above air i is angle of incidence r is angle of refraction theta is glancing angle glancing angle is the angle between interface and the incident ray d is the deviation deviation means light traveling in this direction bends by this angle takes deviation by this angle if glancing angle is 30 degree then you have to take angle of incidence as 60 degree okay in most of the problems and multiple choice questions to confuse you they may give this glancing angle but you have to find the angle of incidence thereby you have to continue the problem continue with the solution okay so these are the few basic terms now loss of refraction loss of refraction first loss is interface normal drawn at the point of incidence first loss is incident ray refracted ray and the normal drawn at the point of incidence lie on a plane that plane is plane of the paper so this incident ray normal and refracted ray should lie on a plane meaning if the ray is confined to paper normal is also drawn on the paper then this refracted ray cannot come out of this plane that is the meaning of first law they lie on a plane second this is interface normal this is the incident ray refracted ray angle of incidence angle of refraction 
Second law says ratio of sine of the angle of incidence to sine of the angle of refraction is always a constant. You change the direction of incident light. The direction of refracted light changes such a way that this ratio remains constant. So it follows some rule. It changes in a definite fashion. That definite fashion is this. Whatever may be the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction changes following this except at theta equal to 0. Why theta equal to 0? If sin 0 is 0, this is the incident ray, this is the interface, normal, this is the incident ray, then angle of incidence equal to 0. The light travels straight, angle of refraction is also 0. So, at theta equal to 0 means i equal to 0, r is also equal to 0, thereby sin 0 by sin 0. Students, can you guess this? Sin 0 by 0, sin 0 by sin 0 is 0 by 0, which is indeterminate. Indeterminate means not defined. Since it is not defined, we cannot say that there is no refraction. There is refraction, but there is no deviation. Don't get confused. There is change in speed means there is refraction, but there is no bending of light. There is a standard question. At what angle of incidence? Snell's law. This is called Snell's law. This Snell's law doesn't hold good. Answer should be at normal incidence or at angle of incidence equal to theta because we get this form. So this formula, this law is called Snell's law. So Snell's law says The ratio of sin of the angle of incidence to sin of the angle of refraction for a pair of media for a pair of media is always a constant called refractive index. Now refraction of light when light travels from rarer to denser medium. Second case, denser to rarer medium. Let this be rarer medium. This is denser medium. Incident ray. So light is traveling in rarer medium. Is incident on the interface. This is the normal drawn at the point of incidence. Students, you have to copy all these diagrams. Don't simply watch. Okay. Now, the refracted ray. This is the refracted ray. Direction of incidence. Direction of incidence is the direction in which light ray is incident. This is angle of incidence, I. Angle of refraction, R. This is the deviation, D. So when light ray travels from rarer medium to denser medium, the light ray bends towards the normal. So the bending is towards the normal. And deviation is given by deviation small letter d equal to just observe if this is i then this angle is i vertically opposite angles therefore deviation is i minus r i minus r is the deviation 
Now, when light travels from denser to rarer medium, this is the interface. Now, let this be denser medium and this rarer. This is incident ray, normal drawn at the point of incidence. After refraction, the light ray bends away from the normal, like this. This is angle of incidence. This is angle of incidence I, this is angle of refraction R, this is the direction of incidence. So from this direction it is bent by D. Now the bending is away from the normal. This is normal away from the normal. If this is I, then this angle is I vertically opposite angles. Therefore, this deviation is R minus I. So, deviation equal to angle of refraction minus angle of incidence. Students, you do not have to use different colors. Please draw these diagrams using scale and pencil. But write neatly. Okay. Now, these are basic things with basic equations. You need to know all these things. First one, interface, normal, incident ray, refracted ray angle of incidence, angle of refraction. Am I right? Let this be air medium and this is some other medium. Water, glass, oil. Let C be the speed of light in this medium, air or vacuum. Therefore, speed of light in the other medium is V. Refractive index is for this medium, second medium. So, refractive index of the medium with respect to air, just write it by N. In some reference books, they use mu, does not matter. This mu or N stands for refractive index. So, refractive index of the medium with respect to air or vacuum equal to sin I by sin R. This is by Snell's law. This is also equal to ratio of speed of light in this medium to speed of light in this medium. So, it is C by V. So, refractive index equal to sin I by sin R C by V. Light is traveling from this medium to this medium, this medium to this medium. Okay. Now, this is the interface, normal, this is the incident ray. This is the refracted ray. Let this be medium 1 and medium 2. Speed of light in medium 1, V1. Let speed of light in medium 2 be V2. Okay. Now, refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium. So, let, let us use the notation like this, N21, it is refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium equal to as usual sin i by sin r also equal to light is travelling from M1 to M2, 
Therefore, this refractive index is the ratio of V1 to V2. So, it is V1 by V2. So, in this case, C by V. In this case, V1 by V2. Now, V equal to F lambda implies V is proportional. V is proportional to lambda. So, refractive index of the medium is C by V also equal to lambda in error vacuum is lambda air by lambda in the medium, lambda medium. So, the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to speed of light in the medium is same as wavelength of light in this medium by wavelength of light in this medium. Similarly, Refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium is V1 by V2 equal to lambda 1 by lambda 2. Why it is lambda 1 by lambda 2? Because V is proportional to lambda. And this refractive index is called absolute refractive index. Absolute refractive index. Absolute refractive index is the refractive index of a medium with respect to air or vacuum. It is always with respect to air or vacuum. Means light should enter from air to other medium. This refractive index is called relative refractive index. Relative refractive index. From now on, let, let me write only Ri for refractive index. This is called relative refractive index because refractive index of medium 2 is always with respect to some other medium 1. So, this is the reference medium M1, but here the reference is always error vacuum. Example for this relative refractive index, light can travel from glass to water. So, here we have to define refractive index of water, refractive index of water with respect to glass. Observe the notation. Light is travelling from glass to water. So, glass to water. Refractive index of refractive index of oil means I should write oil here with respect to water. So, this is water. Here, light is travelling from water to glass. So, here refractive index of oil with respect to water is defined. So, it is N O W. This is N W G. Second, interface normal. Let this be air and this is medium 1. Glass, water, oil. Okay. This is the incident ray refracted ray. Now, refractive index of medium 1 with respect to air, nothing but just denoted by N1. This is equal to C by V1. What is C by V1? Speed of light in air or vacuum by speed of light in the medium 1. Similarly, this is interface normal, this is incident ray, refracted ray, this is air or vacuum, M2, some other medium. So, refractive index of second medium with respect to air or vacuum equal to C by V2. Speed of light in the first medium, C. Speed of light in the second medium, V2. First medium is air, that is by C. Second medium, M2. So, let us denote it by V2. What if the light travels from M1 to M2? This is the incident ray. This is medium 1, medium 2. Speed of light in the first medium, V1. Speed of light in the second medium, V2. 
so here we should define this as we should denote it here we should denote this by refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium equal to refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium is v1 by v2 this is in terms of speeds v1 by v2 equal to v1 by v2 let me multiply and divide this by c what is c by v2 c by v2 is n2 therefore c by v2 is n2 by this is v1 by c remaining so v1 by c can be written as 1 by c by v1 but c by v1 is n1 so refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium is n2 by n1 therefore refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium is n2 by n1 n2 by n1 equal to 1 by n1 by n2 equal to I am taking n2 to denominator ok so n1 by n2 is nothing but refractive index of first with respect to second so we can conclude that refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium is equal to refractive index 1 by refractive index of first medium with respect to second medium now refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium equal to this in terms of speeds it is v1 by v2 am i right so it is from 1 to 2 refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium in terms of wavelengths lambda 1 by lambda 2 again 1 by 2 but refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium in terms of absolute refractive indices is n2 by n1 so n2 by n1 like this be careful with the notation v1 by v2 is nothing but n2 by n1 as an example refractive index of glass with respect to water speed of light in water by speed of light in glass wavelength of light in water by wavelength of light in glass refractive index of glass by refractive index of water 1 by refractive index of water with respect to glass I hope you understood please practice all these equations now third basic equation Snell's law in general form this is the interface normal drawn at the point of incidence incident ray refracted ray let this be medium 1 the other one is medium 2 so speed of light in this medium v1 speed of light in the other medium is v2 refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium is equal to refractive index of second medium by refractive index of first students can you recall this this is the relation between relative refractive index and absolute refractive indices so it is n2 by n1 
also equal to if this is angle of incidence angle of refraction then it is simply i by r it is simply sin i by sin r so cross multiply and rearrange n1 sin i equal to n2 sin r refractive index of first medium this is n1 in that medium there is this angle i therefore n1 sin i refractive index of second medium n2 in that n2 there is this r therefore n1 i n1 sin i equal to n2 sin r n1 sin i equal to n2 sin r so this is called the snell's line general form so in problems make sure that you start from snell's line general form not this specific equation normal shift the apparent shift in the position of the object along the normal when an object in one optical medium is seen from the other is called normal shift you have observed these things right if this is a container with water and there is an object at the bottom means this object appears to be raised if it is a coin stone then if the view from above then this coin or this stone appears to be raised then this is called image of this object similarly in swimming pool you can see bottom appears to be raised but actually it is not it appears to be that feeling is called normal shift that's an optical illusion first case let us draw ray diagram of normal shift when the object is in denser medium and viewed from the rarer medium interface rarer medium denser medium object should be in denser medium okay this is the object o for object this is a ray from the object along the normal it travels straight no issues isn't it angle of incidence zero angle of refraction is also equal to zero now let me consider second ray and close to the first it should be very close but let me write little far this is second ray from the object normal drawn at the point of incidence the light ray undergoes refraction since it is from denser to rarer medium the light ray should bend away from the normal isn't it so this is the refracted ray and this refract refracted ray appears to be coming from this point so this is the position of the image i observe the divergent rays these two are divergent means these two gives virtual image virtual image now let me consider another ray on the other side this is third ray deliberately i am keeping this different angle normal drawn at the point of incidence refracted ray should be such that
this refracted ray appears to be coming from the same point. So if I produce this back, this also appears to be coming from the same point. So this is the position of the image. So object O, image I and this is virtual image. Virtual image. So this object appears to be raised when it is viewed from the rarer medium, when viewed from above. Second case in normal shift, when object is in denser medium for oblique incidence. The previous case is normal incidence. Now this is oblique incidence. Interface. rarer medium, denser medium and this is the object, O for object. This is a ray along the normal, no issues, angle of incidence 0, angle of refraction is also 0. Now second ray close to the first but if it is very close we can't draw and show anything that is why let this be little far okay second ray this is the normal drawn at the point of incidence after refraction since it is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium this light ray should bend away from the normal. This is the refracted ray. This refracted ray appears to be coming from this refracted ray appears to be coming from this point. So this is the position this is the position of the image i so let me consider another ray on the same side normal drawn at the point of incidence this ray also bends such that students observe keeping these two points as reference I am trying to draw the refracted ray. Okay. This ray also bends such that this also appears to be coming from the same point. So this is the position of the image. Even from oblique incidence means when we are observing from this side, when we are observing from this side, oblique incidence. The rays appears to be coming from some point and at that point you can expect image of this object. Since the refracted rays are divergent that leads to virtual image, virtual image. So this object appears to be raised. So this is virtual image and this is for oblique incidence. Now lateral shift the ray is laterally shifted. Let us see how this happens. Let this be a parallel sided glass slab. Glass slab okay let this be the incident ray if this is the incident ray this is the direction of incidence If outside medium is air, then light is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium. To trace the refracted ray, let me draw the normal. 
so light rays traveling from rarer medium to denser it bends towards the normal like this this is the refracted ray inside the glass then normal at the point of incidence this ray is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium denser to rarer means again bending should be away isn't it bending should be away students you have to make sure that the emergent ray is parallel to the direction of incidence so actually this incident ray is shifted laterally and travels straight so that is why the name lateral shift this shortest distance shortest distance between shortest distance between direction of incidence and the emergent ray is called lateral shift shift l stands for lateral lateral shift incident ray refracted ray this is the incident ray at the second interface this is emergent ray so the ray appears to be shifted laterally the perpendicular distance or the shortest distance between the direction of incidence and the emergent ray is called lateral shift and in this lateral shift if this angle is i even this angle is i then only these two can be parallel to each other this is angle of refraction r this is r this is angle of incidence at the second interface but this angle is equal to this angle and this is i now third application third observation atmospheric refraction let this represent earth let this outer circle represent sky this is the atmosphere of course density of atmosphere is not uniform therefore it is a heterogeneous medium doesn't matter let this be a person for this person this is the horizon for this position for this person if sun is somewhere here means it is either sunrise or sunset okay if sun is above the horizon horizon then he can easily see the sun now let be the position of the sun light from the sun as it enters the atmosphere undergoes refraction and this light bends because of this bending even after the sunset or even before the sunrise this person can see the sun so early morning we can see the sun means during that time even sun is below the horizon still we can observe that's because of atmospheric refraction and for him this is the light from the sun the light appears to be coming from some place so this is the position of the image so this person will be observing this sun in this place means this is virtual image of this object so this is the real object and this is the virtual image 
so this magic during sunrise or after sunset atmospheric is due to atmospheric refraction now total internal reflection this is an interface this is normal drawn at the point of incidence incident ray if light ray is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium then light bends towards the normal this no this you know if intensity of incident light is 100 unit then this could be say 75 unit remaining 25 unit is reflected this is about say 25 percent this is called simultaneous reflection refraction simultaneous reflection refraction suppose this is the interface normal this is the incident ray and refracted ray is also present in the same medium this happens if the incident is 100 unit reflected is also 100 unit and refraction is absent then we can say that the light is totally internally reflected so this is called TIR total internal reflection and here this interface is not a reflecting surface then also the light can undergo reflection so that is the beauty of total internal reflection such reflection you can observe in the case of plane mirror but it is a mirror if it is a mirror for any angle of incidence there is 100% reflection theoretically there is reflection in mirror but interface say water air even in water and air the light is totally internally reflected so we have to discuss this okay this is an interface interface of rarer and denser media let this be an object in the denser medium O stands for object this is a ray from the object along the principal axis here angle of incidence is zero therefore angle of refraction is also equal to zero it travels straight there is no deviation but there is refraction that refraction is with respect to change in speed students change in speed is also refraction but there is no deviation I am just changing the color but actually there is no change of wavelength okay let this be second ray if this is second ray normal drawn at the point of incidence the light ray is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium so the light ray bends away from the normal if this angle is I1 this angle is R1 then R1 is greater than I1 why R1 greater than I1? Light ray is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium. 
Now let me increase the angle of incidence. This is third ray. Normal drawn at the point of incidence. Let this angle be I2. If I2 is greater than I1, I2 greater than I1, then naturally R2 is greater than R1. There is refracted ray such that angle of refraction is greater than the previous. This is R2. So as the angle of incidence increases, angle of refraction also increases. But the beauty, angle of refraction is always greater than the angle of incidence. Now, let me consider another ray. This is normal drawn at the point of incidence. As the angle of incidence increases, angle of refraction also increases and becomes 90. So in this case, the refracted ray grazes the surface and angle of refraction is 90. So R equal to 90 degree. And this angle of incidence where R is 90 is called critical angle denoted by C. So critical angle is that angle of incidence in the denser medium where the angle of refraction is 90 degree. Now, if I consider any other ray beyond this beyond this ray, then this is normal. Then the light ray undergoes reflection. See? As the angle of refraction increases, increases and becomes 90, more than 90 means the light ray should be inside the same medium. So this is called TIR, total internal reflection. Internal reflection is okay, you understood. But why this term total means? Consider this ray. If intensity of incident is 100, 99 percent is found in the emergent ray, but 1 percent is reflected back. This is 1 percent. In the second case, this is the incident ray, 100 unit. This is the refracted ray. Along with this ref refracted ray, there is a faint reflected ray. So this is simultaneous reflection refraction. Even for this ray, incident ray, refracted ray, 100 unit, say this is 70 unit, about 25% is found in the reflected component. So this is again simultaneous refraction reflection. Now, for this ray also, there is a faint reflected ray. But in the last case, in this case, where angle of incidence is greater than critical angle, this is I greater than C. The reflected component is inside the same medium. There is a reflected component. If this is 100 unit, this is also 100 unit. We are neglecting absorption by the medium. Please note, we have neglected absorption by the medium. If in the absence of absorption by the medium, if incident is 100 unit, reflected is also 100 unit. So this is total internal reflection. Even the reflected, sorry, even the refracted component is along with the reflected component. That is why the term total. So it is total internal reflection. Students, go through the write-up and copy all the steps.
for one mark what is critical angle so critical angle is that angle of incidence in the denser medium where the angle of refraction is the is equal to 90 degree second short answer question what is tir total internal reflection it is the phenomenon in which a ray of light is totally internally reflected when it travels from denser medium to rarer medium and angle of incidence is greater than critical angle third important question conditions for tir there are two conditions third question is conditions conditions for two tir there are two conditions light ray should travel from denser medium to rarer medium second the angle of incidence should be greater than critical angle now expression for critical angle consider a beam of light traveling from denser medium of refractive index n2 to rarer medium of refractive index n1 let this be the interface rarer medium refractive index is n1 denser medium refractive index n2 this is a ray of light in the denser medium incident on the interface this is normal drawn at the point of incidence let this be angle of incidence i1 this angle of refraction if i equal to c angle of incidence equal to c then angle of refraction equal to 90 degree isn't it so if this i1 is i which is equal to c then this refracted ray is perpendicular to the normal or and this r equal to 90 degree from snell's law in general form refractive index of this medium n2 into sin of this angle n2 sin i equal to refractive index of this medium n1 sin of that angle sin r at critical angle i equal to c and r equal to 90 degree this implies that n2 sin c equal to n1 sin 90 therefore sin c equal to n1 by n2 equal to 1 by n2 by n1 take this n1 to denominator which is equal to 1 by refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium therefore sin c equal to 1 by refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium if
if rarer medium is here then refractive index is n1 and let n2 be equal to n the denser medium is just n okay then expression for sin c becomes 1 by n2 that n2 is nothing but just n or c equal to sin inverse of 1 by n this is the expression for critical angle this is for 2 or 3 marks.